Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today's video, I decided to do something a bit different. I haven't done a video like this before, but this is the way I like to use my ephemeras. When I get gifted uh, many different packs of ephemera, I like to pour it all in the middle of my desk. Then I like to sort them into little categories. Or sometimes I might change my mind and put them in color categories. But today I have gone through and sorted all of these in different areas. And I I'm just going to tell you what I did. Because I think that maybe people who are starting out in paper crafting, they might want to know what people do with all these ephemeras. And I think that's going to be um, interesting to know. Because everybody does things differently. You always got to listen to your heart and go with what makes you happy. And this is what makes me happy. I love ephemera. Definitely, definitely is something I cannot live without. I love it so, so much. I wish I had like endless supply of it all the time. Now, this one here, this pile here, I have is some animal related or nature bird related category so i have a cat in the basket and i have a dog and some giraffe and some peacock right now with these ones i usually don't it's not a category that i always reach for but i do use them because they are very unique i also think of them as not animals only i think of them as characters i also want to tell you that sometimes i like to alter my ephemera for example i love the look of this blanket and the basket but i am not too fond of the cat together with the basket i may use the cat separately so what i do with things like this is i do chop it like this i just wanted to give you guys a guide that it's totally okay to alter these ephemera pieces. So now I have a basket and a cat. So instead of having one piece of ephemera, I now have two. Now you might be thinking, because this bit is all chopped off, that I am not able to use this. No, I can definitely use this. For example, let's say I am layering my embellishments. So if I have some piece like this and I put the kitty cat behind it, do you think I chop the kitty cat's half like little tail bit off? No, you wouldn't know. So I love altering my ephemera pieces so I can get maximum use out of each images. And that's what I really wanted to share today with you guys. So that's one method. Now I have this basket chopped. This bit looks kind of odd, but this side looks okay. So I will probably do something like adding bits and pieces here to make myself a new ephemera image. And for me, I might sometimes use like leaves or flowers. Now, if I do that, look, can you see that half chopped off handle of the basket? No, it's completely hidden now. And then I have a big pile of florals right here. I love flower images. I can have a ginormous container load of it. There are some big pieces and there are some little tiny pieces and there are some middle size pieces. Now to layer, you have to try many different sizes. So for instance, if I put that here, Let's have a look. It looks okay, but the floral image is too tall. So I am going to go for something more different. Okay. So if I do that, it's actually way nicer than what I had before. So I wanted to give you guys example of how I use my ephemera pieces to make it more worth it and to make it more beautiful if something doesn't agree with my heart. So 
That's one example, altering by chopping off the image and using the other part for another project. Now I also have this category here. This is a category with little images and it's got like books and like radios and little purse and like clips, books. Now the recent typewriter and game boards. I absolutely love these images. Now, the reason why I have categorized like this is in the future, I would love to do like a coffee and books theme creation. So I am kind of gathering things. I also have another category. Now, this is a small category that I was able to gather with all of these lots are these like threads a different spool design and beautiful elegant scissor piece oh i love this piece so much and i also discovered that there was a ruler with the gold foil accent i also have a small bag that i have started gathering things anything related sewing so that's gonna go into my sewing bag i also have this pile here that goes into the flower this pile here is just of different leaves. I also wanted to show you what I'm going to do with these. Oftentimes, when I have lots of florals, I always go towards reaching the floral pile first rather than adding leaves. With these leaves, I can do so much. Leaves are usually used as in-between layering pieces or add it to the very back or add it to the bottom or I can stitch several together and make a ruffle type of banner thing. But this time, as I was looking through these shapes, I realized they also look like flower petals. So what I'm going to do with this one, I really wanted to. But I thought I'm going to do a video because I haven't done a video like this before where I show you how I utilize all my beautiful ephemera pieces. So now I have a flower petal, okay? So then I am going to make the other one like that also. I'm going to make it into a flower petal shape. And what I'm going to do is I am going to put them like this. And I'm going to also use this piece here and make more flower petals that I can use to make my own flower. You see what I mean? I love adding different bits together to create something completely new. It is just so joyful to do that. A lot of the times you will get some pieces that you just don't know what the heck to do with. Don't throw those away. You will have great use for it. You can chop it right down in the middle or you can chop them into three bits and use it for three different items. So I have this, you guys. You see what I mean? I have a beautiful flower formed already, just like that. And now I just need something for the middle. And guess what? I have a pile of circle images and I just need to choose something that is the right size that I can use to layer in the middle. And I'm thinking I might go with this yellow. Mm, not sure about that color. Let's try this white with the black. I think that's even better. So now I am going to glue it and make myself a new flower like this, okay? Now I won't do that on camera right now because I have so many things I wanted to um, show you and explain to you. Next I have lots of, I've discovered that I have many different tall size leaves. These are the tall size leaves, okay? Now this is a great layering piece behind a rosette, okay? Or you can utilize this in other way by creating a bag topper. You can put them horizontally like this. You see this pattern going on? 
and then you can do that. Now you have a curvy pattern going on. You can glue it like this and start layering more pieces on top or you can, another pile I have is tickets. I can always utilize long strip of tickets too. For example, you can do this. Now I'm not telling you to use tickets to do the layering all the time, but what I'm trying to show you is the different images and elements that you can use to create many different embellishments. So you can just do this and then add something on top even more. Let's say a word piece or a really pretty flower piece there, let's say. No, nothing like that. If you have a large floral piece like this, that kind of takes over everything, so it won't work. So not that. Let's try. I'm just going to have a look. Hmm. Something a bit smaller would be great. You can even minus one bit and then add something like this as well. And then you can add a word piece as well on top. So I have another pile of words. It's so much easier when I have a word pile ready for me to go through to find the right size and the shape that will make this look magnificent. So for example, something that's not bigger than the flower, but something that could be maybe a one third of the size of the flower. For example, this one here. But that purple, lilac purple, doesn't go with the red, the orangey red. So I am going to remove that. For example, this one here, this color is really, really pretty. And it can go nice over here like this. Now, because there is a gold accent, I really do not want to cover that gold accent. So what I'm going to do is move it up a bit. Change the position of it first. And then you can have, see in between the A and the G, there's a little dip. And you've got to use that to show, see, you can show the foil bit. Now, I wouldn't glue it down like this. You would need to add some dimensions. And the way to do that is using foam tapes. The foam tapes are absolutely wonderful. In America, I know you guys buy them from Happy Crafter Shop, I think it was. I really admire all of you buying those colorful foam sticker pieces. I mean, she sells them in yellows and oranges and pinks and even green, I think it was. Oh my gosh, you guys in America are so lucky that you can find something like that. Anyway, I'm in Australia and this is the best foam tape that I have found. And this is from a shop called Total Choice here in Australia. And I absolutely love this. It sticks really well. I will be adding the foam strip here to raise my word piece a little bit up like this. Then it creates an even more better look. This is just an example. I'm not saying that this is my final decision, but I just really wanted to explain to you guys how I go about layering my pieces and how I use different sizes of ephemera. Okay, so that's one example. Then I am going to now show you something else. So let's move some off to the side so I have space to show you guys things. I have a pile of bigger images right here. Now usually bigger images, you can turn them into tags by punching a hole at the top if it doesn't. See this one here? This is supposed to be a journaling card, but it has a really interesting shape. 
it's got that ticket torn edge shape here and I would love to utilize that so I am going to maybe punch a hole at the top and start layering on top what else can you do with big pieces like this turn them into shaker if you have a sewing machine you can layer acetate on top or white tool or any type of different tool that you have you can put it on top take it to the sewing machine stitch three sides add your sequins inside and then close it but i also love using vellum vellum makes it really really beautiful and also you don't have to turn these big pieces into shaker you can also utilize beautiful mesh like this. This is a glittery mesh and you can layer mesh on one side or horizontally in the middle and just start layering your other images on top. So you can see the base design as well as the, the texture and you're gonna have different images so there'll be so many wonderful things you can do with this. I love adding vellum because vellum makes sure that you see the underneath pattern and it also makes the sequin colors look even nicer. So I can do that with this. Another thing I can do with this is I can actually cut here, cut along that line there and then use this bit as a ticket piece for layering piece for another type of embellishment and then use this bottom bit for another. Things like this, this is a baggage claim. It already comes with a hole at the top. So this will be very easy to use and turn into a tag for your tag flip. So if you go through your ephemera box or container Whenever you see things that have a hole at the top, it doesn't matter what size it is or what shape it is. If you just put them together, you already have a very interesting tag flip going on. Here is another piece. This is a large ephemera piece that doesn't have a hole, but there is plenty of space for you to add a hole punch right there then it becomes another piece to add to your tag flip. And now you have all these different shapes to work with as your base. And your tag flip will come together really fast. This is another piece that you can use. It doesn't have a hole punch, but wherever you can see a possibility of adding a hole punch, you can do that. I also... If I'm not in the mood for making tag flip, I turn these into shaker. Now, another way to do this is, let's see, for example, this one here. This is a really nice image that you can turn it into shaker easily. How? By cutting out the middle rectangular part, the white space, cut that out. Then you turn it around and then once the middle part is hollow, you turn it around, add your glue around the frame, and then add your acetate or vellum sheet. So instead of this white bit here, this creamy bit here, it'll now be your acetate sheet or your vellum sheet on here or tool. Okay, then you're going to, after that's glued onto the frame, then you're going to add your foam tape or you can do it you, if the foam tape that you have is really thick like this, then you cut it in half so that it's, you know, the right size for the frame width. Then you're going to add your sequin and things like that. But when you do the frame, I like the way I like to do it. Let's say that I'm using, um, for example, let's see, I'll, I'll use something else. Let's say that I'm using this as my background pattern paper, okay? Now, after cutting this out and adding the acetate, adding the um, foam sheet, foam sticker bit on the frame there, I like to put my sequins right in the middle, right in the middle 
here. I gather my sequins right in the middle. So then I can see exactly where I am placing my acetate frame. So many possibilities with ephemera pieces. It is just so fun to have all of these ephemera pieces in front of you. You'll just get lots of ideas happening. So I've talked to you about the tags and the shakers that you can do. Now, pieces like this, you can leave them as whole like this instead of separating them because you are meant to separate them. Well, a lot of the people would, but I sometimes don't. When it's attached like this, I see it as an opportunity to turn this into something different instead of separating them. I would maybe turn it horizontally and I might use this and turn this into a bag topper by layering things on top, okay? Another thing you can do is you can punch out these bits here. So then you'll have three windows and add an acetate piece behind it and add foam sheet, foam sticker all around the outside edge and turn it into a shaker as well. When you have a really large piece like this, you're thinking probably it's way too big for you to turn this into anything. No. On days that you just feel like making shakers, just turn them into shaker. Just cut out the middle bit, turn them into shaker. Could Because once you have a lot of the shaker bits already made and you have the shaker bases already there for you, you will be able to utilize big pieces like this when you're making your mini album front, or you can turn the actual shaker into a tag piece by adding something on top, by gluing a tab on the top and put it, adding a hole punch at the top. Then it becomes another interesting tag piece. Same with this one here. This is meant to be a journaling card. I can turn this into a shaker if I wanted to, or a tag piece. Every time I see a frame like this, it always makes me want to turn it into a shaker, but you can turn this into like a little mini shadow box by choosing a pattern for the background. Let's say I'm choosing this for my background, okay? I just need to use my foam, foam tape to add to here. Instead of add, don't add the acetate if you want it to be a shadow frame. You just add the foam tape around and then glue it down. Then you will have dimension like this. Then you will use your little size images and layer inside. So it'll be like a shadow box, shadow frame type of embellishment. You can do that too. Um, what else did I wanted to share? Oh, this bit here. I can probably go on and on talking about ephemeras and what I do with them. Now, this is a piece that I really wanted to show you. This was a large piece that was included in the Poppy and Pear collection. Now, I really don't like seeing all this white space here, okay? I can choose to leave it like this and add pieces to the bit here to cover my white space, but that's not gonna make me happy. So what I would do is I would separate it like this. I would cut and separate so I have two pieces instead of one, okay? So now I have this and then I have this. Then I just need to cut this nicer like this. I will cut it much nicer next time I need to use it. Then I will have this piece to use for something else and this piece to use for something else. Or I can add foam tape to behind this and put it on the side like this because this green is also featured in the truck, at the back of the truck. So it actually goes together really nicely. Another thing I would like to share is Vellum pieces, don't be afraid to use vellum pieces. Just think of it as a normal cardstock. If you add acetate behind this, if you use a, like a um, glue and add an acetate or you can use double-sided tape, whatever you 
wish to use as your adhesive. You can add an acetate behind it and then add some um, foam tape to create the dimension for your shaker. Or if you don't want a thicker shaker dimension, you just have to use um, tool. You can use tool and back it onto any pattern paper that you'd like. Let's see, for example, I wanted to do that. I can add a tool onto this, put this on top, and I will probably stitch around two thirds of it, leave a little gap to add my sequin in, then close the gap. Then you have another shaker type. I think I shared with you guys enough. Um, let me just have a look at my section to see if I talked about everything. I showed you what to do with the word pieces. It just makes my life so much easier having a, a separate word section. Now this is kind of like a miscellaneous section. The miscellaneous section is always great to have on the side because as you are forming different layers and putting images at the front and the back and the side and things like that, you will sometimes need a little something different to give it a bit of an accent point. So then you can go through your miscellaneous pile and choose something to add behind or front or wherever it you think is something's missing. Um, pieces like hot air balloon is such a beautiful design. So I will do my best to show much of it as possible by only adding something little to the side if I were to um, use this piece as layering. If you also have um, two different sizes, you can add a bit of a foam tape to there and then you can just layer it like this. And then you can choose a word piece on top. And I'm just gonna randomly use something. So let's say that I added a foam tape behind like this. This is a little mini tag. I can actually add some twine to the top and maybe have it somewhere attached like this too or behind or somewhere at the top you get the idea i think so that's some of the things that i do with my ephemera um i hope this has been helpful to you guys it's just it can be overwhelming if you have everything mixed in a box so that's why i like to categorize into big size miscellaneous word section, florals, leaves, animals or characters, and hearts, you know, things like shapes like hearts, I put them separate too, because hearts can always complement any type of layering. Hearts, circles, um, yeah, so have some shape category as well, but the main thing is there is no right or wrong way of doing crafting. You just do what makes you smile, not what other people are doing. You go with your heart and you follow your heart and your mind and what your eyes see to be a happy piece. That's the true fun joy of crafting. Don't look at your left side of the crafting world, the right side of the crafting world. Don't try to copy what other people are doing. Yes, be inspired by many, but don't ever try to copy because that gives a lot of headache. Thank you so much for listening to me going on about ephemera. Um, thank you so much for always supporting my channel and listening to me. You guys all have a wonderful day. Bye for now.